The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. And uh, we're going to take a look at the Shanghai really quick, but uh, as soon as our charts get going, we're going to be able to show the chart. But, you know, some pretty bearish numbers came out, and the Shanghai rebounded quite well off of that number. Um, here's the reversal that happened today. We got below the unfair lows on our daily profiles here. This is, again, the daily on the Shanghai. Not showing the weekly yet, but, uh, again, I think this 3,000 level is going to be a foregone conclusion and as we look at this, we scroll back. Uh, we've got 3056 as our near-term targets on this. And that reversal action is relatively bullish, in my opinion, in general for the U.S. stock market. We talked yesterday about, about a possible kind of pullback to where we had broken out from before on the weekly. Here's the weekly on the S&Ps. So at 1975, it looks like we hit it. We didn't, actually. We've reached a low of 1980. And again, uh, you know, yesterday's initial action, I'm going to pull this up, was uh, a little astonishing to me, but eventually we have settled back. We talked about, you know, Joey specifically, you know, as a primer on basic trading 101, in my opinion, talked about, you know, like don't lose sight of what the broad stroke really is and what the MO is for the trend in general. And we, you know, talked about, you know, now we've got to look at support a little bit on the on the S&Ps at 1975, we hadn't quite got there yet. Um, we've got to look at the internals, obviously. We've got to look, take a look at the breadth, but also the same type of notion on crude oil. It was, you know, he actually kept some long crude oil positions on. We were talking about that after the show because, you know, the MO is the commodity kind of situation has turned a little bit. There's a lot of indications, the coppers of the world, the golds, obviously, the, the crude oil, changing tone here and not necessarily using that 36 and some change as a reversal to go short opportunity remember we're looking at the weekly situation on crude and as we look at this it was, re it was really great to do that show yesterday and talk about that concept because you know the ultimate target we've reached a high right now 30 38 39 and that unfair low on the daily, on the weekly is 38.50. So yesterday we were talking, and I'm, you know, I uh, kudos to Jody, Joey to kind of bring this concept to the to the table. 36.28 was just a chance to take some weight off, not necessarily to, to turn around and go short. Now, obviously, we broke out, and now we're into what I would consider to be, you know, everything's got to be off the table right now. We've reached a major, major long-term inflection point. We've almost kissed it to the tick. We've reached a high again of 38.39. That unfair low is 38.50. Um, we may look at this, you know, again, you know, talking about a contra trade, we may look at this as something to you know, play around in a small fashion with shorts, but remember, if you're playing you know, the, the broad MO of commodities have kind of taken a turn. You, you know, this is not exact. I mean, you've got a, you've got a, a bigger inflection point at 4182 to really kind of look at this as a retracement back up to the top of the profile in the long term on crude oil. This is the April contract. So you know, if I look at the a continuous contract, I'm going to be uh, look at the same thing. But right now, this, this is, you know, that daily was something. This is even more so. A little bit of a lid here when it comes to crude oil. So again, it's 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 more than likely time to, in my opinion, take a, quite a bit off, if not all of it. Wait and see. Now we got to wait and see if we get a weekly close above this 38.50 area. Today's Tuesday. You got three more, three and a half more days, obviously. But uh, you you 
you can look at this now um, as we're in this daily 36.28 up into that 38 and 38.50. God, what was the number again? I'm getting confused here. 38.50 as a possible situation where we're going to churn around here for a little bit. Um, I don't think, you know, the dollar and any other normal indicators when it comes to commodities is, is going to be something to look to here. I mean, we've obviously had a pullback in the dollar and we're getting back below that 9750, 9760 area that we talked about. But I, again, I don't really think that the price of the dollar is really going to drive commodities north or south right now. It seems that there's been a little bit of a turn here. So again, going back to crude oil for a second, you know, what do you do with this thing now? Um, in my opinion, all the weight on crude oil could be taken off right now and just a wait and see. You, you had a chance to take off some at 36.28 yesterday. You reached some targets, and now we're even reach, reaching bigger targets here. Okay. So one of the things I want to talk about this morning with the market possibly – stock market that is possibly kind of turning around and gathering itself around this 1975 area is we want to take a look at two things here when it comes to the XLF. We've reached this 2237. And when we look at the internals of the XLF, I'm going to go into the scanner really quick. I'm going to see on my long term that the financials are almost still the seller dweller. Healthcare is still in the long term, still the, you know, the, the one that's been lagging the most in the long term. But as we look at this, we want to notice one thing in particular. If you notice that this big yellow section on our, on our odometers, what does that mean? Uh, we've reached a pretty serious overextension here on the daily. You don't see this too often. All right. You've reached 79 versus four here. All right. But at the same time, you had 54% of the stocks in the XLF. And I'm going to show you this here. 50, I'm going I'm to pull this up. Let me just put in a new box here on our daily. 54% of the stocks on the XLF showing this yellow peel back on green cells, which means new supply areas are starting to appear on the XLF on the intermediate. Now, what does that mean? That means that you're going to have on the I'm going to go into our daily here. We don't see this on the XLF in general and on the ETF, but on the internals, we're going to see a lot of big, a lot of new overhanging supply, a lot of new balanced areas to appear up there. And as we have reached at the same time, this major, major inflection point at 2237, you know, that combined with something else we're going to talk about after the break, which is the June contract on the long-term weekly being at support. Remember, these XLF internals need a, a widening yield curve to make money. And if the bonds and notes are on these support areas, that's, that's a chance to have lower rates again. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we come back, folks. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. We were trying to put this puzzle together for the, ET uh, the ETF, the XLF at the end there. And, um, we were kind of referencing the 10 year at the same time. And as we look at this on the 10 year, this 129 general neighborhood, temporary support on this. And that's really kind of cool when it comes to looking at the XLF because you know, we talked about this all the time. These financials need a widening yield curve. I know the market has kind of ramped up pretty hard. It's dragged this thing up, in my opinion. Uh, Joey and I had been speaking. Um, you know, about the financials being the kind of the sector, there's really not a lot of play there, not a lot of bang for your buck. We've had a, just a big snapback on this, but now we're at something 22.37. Um, and as we look at this, you know, is this an opportunity to go short? You know, I, I, I think the market's going to consolidate up here in, in general and spin around a little bit. Um, but, I, you know, this is obviously a sector that I've had my eye on to be able to wait patiently until we got to this inflection point to be able to kind of whack it a little bit. And I, I feel like this is an opportunity. If you're looking at a sector, you know, you're looking at possibility of uh, doing some long short plays. This is one you definitely want to put in the short basket, in my opinion. Um, you know, this the meetings that they're having this week and, and any announcements, you know, these guys are always kind of after the fact when it comes to you know, Fed speak and things like that. They say, oh, well, the commodities are turning around. I mean, you know, they could say some non-dovish type comments, but I, I really don't think that's going to happen. And I think this is a relatively safe play if you're looking to, you know, do a, a short ETF versus a long ETF. And uh, that's that's kind of where we're at. Hold on. Let me, I think we're going to try to get Joey here to get some comments, too, about what's going on in, uh, in Asia in just a little bit so we're going to wait for that and uh what what somebody had asked uh in the den which is a great question how do you pull up the xlf in the scanner well how do you bring up the xlf I, i'm assuming terry that means in the scanner so here's here's you know here it is in the heat grid when it comes to the etf so i'm going to i'm going to hit that really quick and you know, you get to see the internals. You get to see information in an aggregate manner in the internals when you go into this. You're looking at daily. You're looking at statistics. You're looking at the weekly. You're looking at the four-hour. 
in the one hour if you want to see that. But uh, I was kind of focused on this overextension in the XLF internals and at the same time seeing over half of them showing these new profiles that will more than likely lock in today. So the whole game will change on the on this XLF. But how do you pull it up? You go into the dashboard and um, you can just type in XLF here. And there it is. And I think this is in the... I'll find out what section it's in, but you can always keep these up in a in your port your kind of custom portfolio. And, and I, I probably don't talk about the internals of the scanner enough. I'm an idiot, but uh, we you can go in here and add a list and create your own list. And I think we've got Joey on with us. Joey, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. How are you? Man, this, this is such a treat for me. <laughs> I, I think it's I think it for it's everybody else is too. Man. Really, man. I mean, to have you on every day and to talk about this is, you know, I think everybody can benefit from listening to a veteran and, you know, just, you know, really getting a different perspective, especially from the U.S. side and the other side of the globe. So thanks for coming on so many times now. Um, what's on your mind, man? What are you, what are you, what are you looking at? Uh, just, you know, uh, these uh, oil, gold, copper silver you know they all broke out um at, at i added to the positions uh you know two days ago um uh -huh. I, I guess on friday it was friday right yeah friday right and mm -hmm. um and i know you and, left some, i know you left some gold I know, i'm sorry i know you left some crude on even though you took off some at that 36 yeah. and change area you t i was telling everybody earlier um, if you don't mind, I was, I'll just kind of yeah. restate it. I was telling everybody earlier how, how important that conversation we had yesterday actually was because yeah. it was a great staying, like staying okay. in trades and adding well, to trades when they, when yeah, they actually all, break out and staying on yeah, the right but, side, basically. But all, but also not getting mixed up. Like we reached a place to take some yeah. weight off, but leaving some yeah. on, um, yes. you know, and, just and being able to play, yeah. And not getting mixed absolutely. up and going the wrong way. It was, it was it was just fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So what? What's so you? You know, let's. What do you? What do you want to hit first here? Because I've got copper up, and obviously it's it's kind of pulled back a little bit today. What? What do you? What do you want to talk about first? Uh, yeah, well, let's talk about copper. Um, okay. Uh, BHP actually pulled back quite a bit uh, in in uh, Australia, and okay. you know the, the ADRs are down six percent right now. I think. Um, okay. You know, wow. Yeah, yeah. So 29, 29, 30, 29, 40 was the two forty minute resistance. It on BHP. Hit, yeah, it hit that to the tick, and then and uh, and then it dropped straight back. So I I took some out there, and okay. now you know I'm I'm looking to re-enter and and put back on the regular size position. I, I never took all of it off because, like you know, we discussed yesterday, you know, let's let's leave part of the position on to remind us which way we're actually going. Right, and, right, right. And and to also watch, um, if I had taken the position off altogether, I may not have it on my screen. And so, right. the fact that it's down six percent today, uh, I may you know forget to buy it back so you know it's good to leave a, a few shares there just to remind you hey this is great you know i, I sold it up at 29 and now it's back at 27 um okay let's, let's let's look to get it back in okay that that being said um i'm gonna pull up really quick and i'm i'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up the australian dollar this is one we've kind of been had been pounding the desk about Yes. And yes. Well, you, right, you called that really early. Yeah. Well, well what do you do? Well, let's. What do you do with this I, now? I, I, and I was, I was kind of on the other side of that trade because I was looking at China, and I said, "Well, China's melting down to new lows, and how come the Australian dollar isn't, um, right? You know, uh, isn't reacting? And in fact, um, China never went through the lows. It actually just tested the lows, and it actually held above it." Because the, actually, I think because the government came in. Yeah. Oh, and, totally, and, man. I mean, you know, but, you, you knew that was coming. You knew that yeah, was coming. That, I mean, that's besides the point. That's besides yeah, the point. Um, yeah. It, you know, it, it, if you're big enough, you can make the charts, and that's what matters. 
Okay. <laughs> so yeah. if you're a big enough hedge fund or, or mutual fund, then you can make your own chart. But just because somebody else is bigger and they're making the chart, don't, you know, right. don't spike them. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, so the Australian. So let let me do this. We kind of left left the uh, the BHP hanging. Are, are you are you are are you looking to buy pullbacks still on BHP? Then let's yes, just get yes. that. Okay. Okay. Yes, because I, I you know all these um, uh, so gold, silver, um, copper, oil has all you know run quite a bit. So I think we're all running into a bit of resistance. So we're all kind of coming back a little. bit. Right. And so Can you it's hang perfectly on? Cause, normal. Cause, cause yeah. We got to take a break, right? Okay, cool. Sure. sure. Guys, we will be back in uh, just a couple minutes. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. We've got Joey Jung. Ono is from Hong Kong, and uh, Joey, um, I'll, it, do you mind if we go back to the crude oil conversation that we had earlier? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, let's do I'm, that. I'm, I'm showing the XLE stocks, by the way, in the scanner, just a sea of green. And, um, you know, we had, we had, you know, previously, you know, I guess a couple of weeks ago, last month, and we've, we've been looking at these XLE stocks, we've been trying to buy the the best of the best waiting for this move up in case crude oil kind of languished we want to you know do the relative strength trade 
and try to raise the odds. And, um, you know, some of these stocks we were looking at before have really, really done well. Um, you know, this cat, this Cabot, let me see. Cabot Oil and Gas Company. Oh, yeah, yeah. You uh, this has that. been one that's just been sitting. And, you know, SWN, SWN tested my nerve. <laughs> um, it, it, it came right back down to the weekly unfair lows and then did another bounce here. We're back at nine bucks. I mean, this has been a nice little cheap stock to trade, knowing that your downside is zero, of course. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, there, there's. The scanner really had put, had put some really cool things on the on the radar screen for us, but let's go back to crude for a second because that's going to run the show. Uh, and I've got the April contract up now. You were saying, and we're we're right at that unfair low on the weekly that we talked about thirty eight fifty. Now, is this something at this stage where you'd leave still leave something on? Because I was kind of pounding the desk about, you know, this this is kind of a total wait and see now. But what do you think? On on the um, on crude in general, yeah, yeah, on, on crude in general, um, I'm actually taking most of it off. I'm leaving a tiny bit. I, I you know, I, I don't want to go short. Okay, um, so right, yeah, no, I, no. I'm, yeah, I'm just leaving the minimum amount on to keep an eye on it, and that's it. Um, I don't, I don't want to take it off altogether, um, right? Because I still think that. You know, crude goes to 42 before we hit some major resistance because 40 to 42 is, you know, basically the last, uh, you know, yeah, the, the last, last stand, last right? Stands. It was the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the Alamo uh, yeah, for a while. Exactly. You know, I like that. Can before, I use that in the future? Yeah, like absolutely. That. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's what I was telling you guys earlier. It's like the top of the profile on the weekly is 4182. Let's just call it 42, like Joey's saying. Yeah. But uh, he's leaving some on, and Joey. Is uh, uh, you know, the oracle well, of Hong Kong, and uh, <laughs> I, I have to take that for what it's worth. Thank but uh, you, but right now we're, you know, we're <laughs> I'm the we're in a good spot here. You know, so, something else, <laughs> so, something else. Some, somebody just brought up in the den, which I hadn't been focused on really, is the breath on our intermediate on the all stocks. My God, ninety five percent positive. We've got 38 stocks oh, in the XLE. The XLEs, you mean? Tra trading above profiles, two within and zero below. Man, that was Russ. I had not even looked at that at the same time. Um, wow, that is that's that's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. So so that that factored in. That's a little bit overextended there. I have never seen that before. Wow. So could could be due for a little bit of a consolidation at best here. Um, so uh, we were also talking about the, the XLF relative to the 10-year, um, but we kind of covered that. And what I wanted, what I, I guess what everybody wants to know is, you know, what are you looking at for a possible, I know you talked about commodities still leaving some on, but is there any other thing on your radar screen right now that, that everybody could possibly take a look at as, as something you're, you're looking at as a, as a, uh, as, yeah, well, as, I mean, as a great play right now? Well, in general, all the commodities, oil, copper, silver, gold, um, they all um, had rallied really nicely. You know, it, it broke through kind of multi-year downtrends. Um, it actually closed strong uh, last week for the first time, you know, in, a, in many years. So right. all the positive signs are there. They rallied a little bit too much in, in the very short term. So just uh -huh. in the short term, they're quite overbought, and you know I do expect a little pullback here um, in all of these. Um, you know, you know what's and, wild and, is we, we've got we've yeah. got a new profile appearing below price action in gold today, and that that's actually bullish. Um, yeah, that whoop. is bullish. I, I'm hoping that it actually tries to trade back to the the top of the profile there and to right. the unfair high and, 53. and then. Yep. Yeah, fifty-three. So I, I, I've got to buy a fifty-six right now. So, okay, yeah, to not um, miss. It. You know, let me so, ask you this: so, yeah. You had talked about, you know, this this weird indicator. Like, who's going to win? The, I mean, like, what is gold going up in your opinion? Well, you know, in all things considered, as far as you know, the the stock market's going up. I think, I up, think, what does I think this gold. Mean? 
if if the U.S. elections go awry, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to get into politics because I don't, you know, because that will just be a two-hour conversation or, or two-day conversation. But if it goes awry, and I think everybody knows, you know, what I'm talking about, then <laughs> gold could be at 1600 real in a real <laughs> in a real you know lightning speed so you know that that's the outside uh trade okay meaning the right. five der uh, derivative trade type of thing you know let me uh, let me ask you a question standard you, you... deviation trade sorry it's just the five standard deviation trade um the uh th the other thing is just on the short term basis in the next two days we have the ecb coming Right. So I don't necessarily want to be fully loaded going into this, uh, you know, into the ECB. Now I think the ECB will basically be dovish, and then that would be positive commodities again. Um, but do you, you know, do you think? I, I don't do you want think to be I'll... fully loaded going into that because prices have moved already. Let me ask you a question. Do you, do you think because a lot of people had. A thousand on their target on the short side, and we really kind of got to that ten sixty on the weekly. Let me just pull that up really quick. Yeah, yeah. That ten sixty well, area I, on the weekly, you know, we never cost, really. Got... That's near cost for the producers, right? So, right, it, it, it does have some type of a natural, um, you know. It, I mean, it's a lot harder to get to eight hundred than it is to get to twelve hundred from from a thousand, right? Do you know what I'm saying? Because no, no. So what? because you, you know the cost of the producers are about a thousand and change, I think that's the last I checked. I'm no expert on this, but but you know the market doesn't care about what it costs them to produce. It, it doesn't. It uh, doesn't. But, it can it can collapse. But given that the world banks and they're still printing money everywhere, uh, China, uh, Japan, Europe, they're still printing money. Um, then. The, uh, the the easier path is to go up rather than down. Well, let me ask you a question. We got about fifteen seconds before break, and I hope you can stay on after break because this might be a something we can talk about for a while on gold. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you're in the middle of a zillion portfolio managers over there in Hong Kong, and I know where your office is. Do you, do you, are, are there people still trying to rearrange their positions from being short and hoping this thing would collapse farther? And no, I think a lot of the positions have been closed, but let's let's talk about okay. that after the break. Yeah. Okay, then we're going to bring up John from Philadelphia also. He's got a question or two about some things he wants to ask. All right, guys, be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi guys, welcome back. <clears throat> welcome back to the show. We've got Joey Jong from Hong Kong on with us. Um, Joey, we're talking a little bit, trying to finish up with gold here, and um, you know we had a really good question. I'd like for you to answer from the den, and the question is, uh, what Joey said raises a question: How much should you shade the profile? It seems like Joey is giving up the three points in order to ensure a fill. What 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 would be the answer to that question? Um, from your standpoint, oh, th that's uh, completely subjective because you know um, sometimes you know, a lot of times these things hit the um, profiles to the tick. <laughs> right. So you know, um, and also when you're actually trading gold, uh, I mean, when you're trading commodities, you're also trading different contracts. And mm -hmm. so that has, uh, you know, different month contracts. So that has a big difference to, um, you know, exactly the level that you should be putting in. So, you know, for me, looking at gold, and I, this is a longer term breakout. So I'm looking at this as a longer term trade. So I don't want to be the guy who's trying to get the last dollar. Um, I would rather give up three points just to get in if That's... it gets gets down there. Um, but if now if this was uh, just a trading uh, kind of a, uh, uh, you know range trading type of scenario where I'm just you know chipping away here and there, then I'd actually just be putting it on the profiles themselves or or actually you know so. It really depends. I mean, this is put. This in particular is a very strong conviction, um, long-term breakout situation, uh, and I have taken profits, and I'm really just trying to get back into the, uh, a, a very high conviction long-term trade. So, I don't mind giving up three points to do that. So you're w you're willing to sacrifice three points for uh, for RJP in the den just to understand this a little bit better. Um, it's a longer term view. Uh, Joey doesn't mind this thing. It seem seemingly to rattle around and and kind of do its thing and have a little bit of noise factor to just be. You know, if this thing reaches, for instance, twelve fifty four and then goes up another hundred dollars an ounce, I know him. He he's going to be uh, hanging <laughs> off his balcony and ready to let go <laughs> so so uh so it's in in this situation the longer term view rjp yeah. it's just it, you know it's not worth it um to try to be stingy on the entry for this type of you know this is a risk reward play is what it boils down to and That's if you're right. willing to you know to risk a little bit you know here to make a lot i mean this it's just not worth it to not be in the trade and if he gets in at 1256 instead of 1253.20 uh, you know, and we, you know, we go to a stop out level. It's just, he's looking at it as, oh, I'm, I'm losing $2 and 70 cents more on the stop. And I'm okay with that because I'm looking at this thing going 
a lot farther yeah, north. Well, 1350 is kind of like the 42 equivalent on, on oil, right? So right. oil up, up at, um, you know, the weekly unfair lows is somewhere up at 4180 to 42. And so that's my kind of uh, medium term goal there. Um, okay. And you know the way that oil's been moving, like five percent a day, we could get there by in two days. But you know, um, same with you know, same with the gold. The ultimate goal is around thirteen fifty before we take a pause. So I, I want to be extra vigilant in getting back into positions that where I take profits. I hear you. Um, all right, so we covered that. It, it, have, have you got any? Okay, I guess we're not going to have John from Philadelphia call. Okay, so Apple. Um, can we talk Apple for a second? Yeah. Okay, so what, what we talked about last week and maybe even the week before is, you know, we reached some 97.63 little kind of range trading situations. Talked about the market could kind of drag everything up. That obviously happened at Apple. And then the next opportunity, um, and this is really, really cool. And, and it, it's just case in point what you just said. We're not looking for – the Apple's not, you know, the the – the, the stock du jour right now, to say the least. Um, no, not at all. And, and what you just said is really, really important because we said last week, you know, let's wait. Now we got to wait till 104, 104.29 to try to short this again if that's going to be the case. So, guess what happened? Uh, we reached 103.75, 25 yeah, cents from the target. Yeah, exactly. you know, now, we're, now we're back into like, you know, 101. And where we 101 at this point? is below profiles on daily and weekly now. So, you know, I, I look. I don't think Apple's going straight down again. I just think that I don't we're gonna t we're gonna take some time between here and ninety two dollars. Ninety two is where the two hundred day two hundred week moving average is. Sorry, two hundred week right. moving average, and that two hundred week moving average has been spot on in in holding this thing. Um, you know, back in uh, two thousand thirteen, it hit that level for you know three four months and that was the absolute bottom and then and then it screamed up from let's see um from uh 57 uh and and basically more than doubled um from there so you know i i'm not looking to necessarily short this thing but i just would not go long at this point i if if it got back to the 200 week moving average which which is around 92 93 and like i said i don't even have to wait for 92 you know right maybe i right. I, I get in at 93 then right. i think that's a happy situation there but you know that's still almost a 10% drop from here so you know that's quite a bit yeah no kidding but it's 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 just case in point what you said earlier and then also case in point just waiting you wait till the market comes to you. Wait till we reach some of these inflection point neighborhoods, and that was the case with Apple. You know, we broke through that one, and then you know you got to, you, you're kind of in no man's land between 97 and some change in 104. Yeah. And now we we got into that neighborhood, which is kind of cool. Um, the, it, uh, we got about a minute before break here, and then um, I, I you know any anything else on your radar screen as far as you know trading plays right now or are you just kind of completely focused on commodities almost exclusively yeah. well commodity I, I think you were talking about xlf um yeah. and you know we're, we're hitting some serious resistance on the financials um you know they've had a they've had a really nice run um the treasuries the treasuries rallied back a, a bit today right um and so uh, i think you know maybe financials has a rest here in fact um yeah i mean uh, that's hitting a bit bit of a resistance and then um other than that i think um some of the longer term trades would be you know solar stocks alternative energy that stuff can actually still have legs because that's been pretty that's been a laggard still okay joey yeah. hey man thanks for coming on again okay. today all right, take care. All right, brother. I'll talk to you a little All bit right. later. Okay. All right. Okay. Have a great week. Bye bye. You too. Bye.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show, and I think we're honored to have John from Philadelphia on. Hey, Big John. How are you? Doing all right, man. Good to hear your voice again. Hey, uh, I wanted to uh, ask if uh, you and I could go through something that I think is very topical, namely the grains. John, okay. um, uh, the world right now uh, is faced with a situation globally where stockpiles of wheat, corn, and beans and rice, put the four together, are at record highs. So with abundant supplies uh, of stuff just grown and stuff grown last year, there's plenty of stuff around. And uh, fitting with ample supplies, we see prices down near multi-year lows. So that's the situation we're confronted with. Uh, what I will tell you, John, is uh, when prices are near lows in advance of the United States growing season, that is seasonally the time on the calendar where the risk-reward on the long side is absolutely off the charts outstanding. That doesn't mean that doesn't guarantee a big rally is coming, of course. Um, I don't know the future, and I wish somebody uh, who did know would tell me, but <laughs> uh, in buying right here, one can contain the risk quite well. Uh, secondarily, um, uh, if we get uh, either less than, uh, excuse me, less than expected acres planted, 
um, because many farmers are in a cash losing position, right. or if we get a weather scare, or if we get an outright weather uh, problem. Any one of those three factors can lead to corn, beans, uh, wheat, rice being up 30, 40 percent in the blink of an eye merely on short covering because what i'll tell you in addition to ample supplies and price prices being at multi-year lows the positioning of speculative money is all on the short side and if those people are faced with rising price the first thing people do when they're losing money of course is cut their losses in this case means buying um so um i see this environment as being ripe for great risk rewards, and I'm wondering if you can go through new crop beans, Kansas City wheat, and Chicago wheat, and share with us what your uh, parameters uh, tell us right here. Well, thanks, John. That's very insightful, and it's, it actually mirrors mirrors what I was talking to my friends down the eastern part of the state that are very into the grain situation. They own grain elevators down there, um, and we always talk about what's the strategy. And again, I'm, we only have about a minute left here, so I'm just going to look at beans, if that's okay with you, because um, we don't have time to go into the other markets you wanted. Um, I'm looking at, uh, well, I can look at corn, too, here really quick. But and, and I'd love for you to call in tomorrow, by the way, to continue this, because we've got a lot to talk about here. You know, what John's saying is absolutely true, and farmers usually react, in general, kind of after the fact. They're like, okay, well... You know, I'm not going to get any more money for beans. I'm going to go plant, plant broccoli or something like that. I mean, that's just unfortunately the way they think. So how do you take advantage of a possible lower in plantings type forecast or things like that? In my opinion, John, this is, this is an option type lottery ticket thing because, you know, you can get some great, great risk awards by buying some, you know, uh, for instance, July corn um, calls out of the money. And, uh, and be able to kind of contain the risk at the same time. Can you call in tomorrow um, and we can really dig into this? Yeah, I, I'd love your help on that. So uh, count on it, John. Thanks so much. All right. And we'll, tomorrow we'll talk about how to a specific play on beans, corn, and wheat and uh, how to really get a really good bang for your buck here. Guys, thanks very much. Stay tuned for Larry. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFN.